Household management for working moms is one giant responsibility and we have such a limited time to do it. So let's talk about five common ways to manage our homes so we are more efficient and effective and have more time to do the things that we actually love to do. Hi, my name is Marta and welcome to Imperfect Life Balance. If you are new here, on my channel we talk about finding your version of life balance and fulfillment without feeling the mom guilt. So if this is something that resonates with you, make sure that you are subscribed down below so you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you are coming back, thank you so much for supporting my channel and finding the content that I create helpful. My very first household management tip for you is to make your space work for you. So basically don't get caught up with what the space is supposed to be or how other people are utilizing similar spaces. So if you have a formal dining room but you never have any formal dinners, you never use it for entertainment, maybe consider using that space in a way that's gonna be helpful to you and your family. Because for our homes to work for us, we have to be able to utilize the space that we have to fill our needs. And we also have to realize that this is more of a journey. What is working for you right now might not work for you a year from now, simply because our lives are changing constantly. Our kids are getting bigger, our careers are changing, and because of that, we have to be more flexible and have to adjust to a new situation. So let me give you an example. I work from home. I am a full-time employee, but I get to work from the comfort of my home. So when we were buying this house a few years ago, one of the first things I wanted to make sure that there is a space for a home office. And at the very beginning, when we were looking at this house, we thought that the basement is gonna be the perfect fit for that. It was spacious, it had a lot of natural light, and also I was kind of influenced by a friend of mine because she also had a basement home office. So I thought that would be a great idea. Now when we actually moved in, I very quickly realized that a home office in a basement is a huge no-no for me. Why? Because I get cold all the time. And the basement is the coldest space in a house. So for me to make it work, we would have to run a space heater pretty much all day long. And that meant that our electric bill would be through the roof. So we went to square one and decided to put a desk in our kids' playroom. So we basically divided the room into two sections. One section was for kids and one section was for the home office. And that worked perfectly fine for a couple of years. And after that time, I decided to finally take the next step and move all the toys into the proper playroom that they actually had. Now you might think, why didn't you do it in the first place? Well, because our playroom has few steps to walk down and my daughter was not able to make that trip back and forth because she was so young at the time. So that's what I mean. It's kind of an evolution. It's kind of a journey. See what works for you at the given point where you are at. Don't think too much ahead unless you are trying to remove walls or spend a lot of money, but make the spaces work for you to fit your needs at a given time, wherever you are in your life. Because if they don't and the house is not working for you, it's gonna create a lot of stress, you're gonna feel overwhelmed, and it's gonna make it very hard for you to manage your household. The second house management tip that I have for you is probably something that you might have guessed, and that is to get rid of your stuff. I don't mean it in a sense of become a minimalist, but let's be honest here. We all tend to have just simply too much stuff in our homes. And think of it this way. The less stuff that you have in your house means that you have to manage less things. Now, this was not such an obvious tip for me all the time. I thought I had just a normal amount of stuff. I really did not think much of it. Until about a year ago, I realized that I am spending so much time cleaning my house. I usually clean my house on Saturdays and I just noticed I was spending hours upon hours cleaning the house. And one day I just thought to myself, what am I doing wrong? Simply because my house is not giant, there is really a limited amount of spaces to clean. So what in the world is taking me so long? And then I realized that most of my time that I think I am cleaning, I am actually moving things from one spot to another. And that's when I realized I need a better system. I need to have less stuff and I need to find a home for every item that we actually have. So I started this decluttering journey about a year ago and just slowly started getting rid of things that we simply don't use. 
and I'd made sure that we have a system where we know where things are going. Now, does that mean that I never have any clutter? No, I have clutter on a daily basis. I don't know how it works in your household, but I swear my kitchen island and my living area can go from clutter-free area into a complete disaster in a matter of an hour. And that is usually how the house looks like towards the end of the day. You have kids bringing toys. We have backpacks and homework and paperwork from work, mail and groceries, and it just kind of all piles up. Sometimes I'm able to put it right away where it belongs, but we all know that that's just an ideal situation and it doesn't happen every time. The good thing is, because we have less stuff and because we know where everything belongs, it does not take us that long to clean up the clutter that we have. So that makes that house management much easier and much simpler. The third house management tip I have for you is to let things go. And this one was a really hard one because I like to be in control of things. I like to have my things a certain way. But I came to realization that I was just making myself stress out and it was mostly because I was just worried about what would other people think about the state of my house if they would come to visit. In my head, I was worried about the opinion of other people. And then a funny thing happened. So it was a few days before Christmas. We were hosting a Christmas Eve dinner, so I was kind of getting a few things ready. So just imagine a kitchen where I'm trying to bake, where you have baking ingredients all over the place, including myself. You have a kitchen island full of gift wraps and tape to get the gifts ready. You have kids playing in the living room, having toys everywhere. The dining room table is messy. And then I hear a knock on the door and it's our neighbors bringing some holiday treats. Now, so I invited them in because you know, that's the proper thing to do, right? And yep, I had to pretty much clean up the dining room table so they can actually sit somewhere because that's how messy it was at that point. And I'll be honest, I felt embarrassed. And I was just trying to explain myself. You know, we have a family dinner coming up. I'm trying to clean up and cook. You know, I apologize for the mess. And they just kind of laughed at me and said, this is not a big deal. This is how our house used to look like, especially when we had younger kids. This is how my daughter's house looked like. And you can tell by the expression of their faces, there really was no judgment there. So either they were good liars or they really didn't care. But what that experience has made me realize that I am stressing myself out over something that might not even exist. And after that initial sort of ice-breaking experience, I really started letting things go. It's not that I don't enjoy a clean and organized house, but I just stopped stressing about it. If something is not perfectly done and by perfectly mean my way, it's fine. It totally is fine because nobody will care. And even I know that 10 years down the line, if I look back at that time, I'm not gonna care if the house was perfectly clean and organized whatsoever. The fourth house management tip I have for you is routines, routines, routines. As a working mom, I really cannot stress how much routines have helped me manage my household much more efficiently. The three main routines I have implemented in my household are morning routine, evening routine, and a cleaning routine. And I have videos on all three of them, so I'm not gonna go over that. I'm gonna just link them down below in the description box. But the reason why I like routines so much is that really they help everyone in my house stay more organized. I manage my time much better and I don't forget to do things. Now, don't think of routines as a rigid schedule where you just stand with your watch and make sure that everything is done in a specific amount of time. Think of routines as an outline for how things are supposed to flow. So for example, my kids in the morning, they have a very simple routine. They get up, they eat breakfast, they brush their teeth, they get dressed, and they are out the door. And it helps them a lot because they know what is expected of them to do. I don't have to stress out in the morning and things are just going much smoother and faster for me. And it really helps me start the day on a positive note. And as working mom, it's a huge win if you can start your day in a less chaotic way. And the fifth house management tip I have for you is to meal plan and prep. I don't know how it is for you, but if I have to think about what I'm gonna cook for dinner or what I'm gonna prepare for lunch the next day, every single night, I get very overwhelmed and very stressed out. 
So I have noticed that if I dedicate some time on a weekend to plan what we are going to eat during the week, it makes everything run much smoother. Because when I have a plan, I know what I need to get at the grocery store, and it also allows me to do some food prep on the weekend. And another great thing about meal planning is that it really allows me to look at it from a practical point of view. So for example, our busiest day is a Wednesday. We have a lot of after-school activities. So I plan ahead that my meal for that day is something that I can cook in a slow cooker. So I don't have to spend a lot of time when I get back from the activities. I literally just have to open my slow cooker and get something to eat. Another example is our Fridays. I have noticed that by the end of Friday, I am just so extremely tired that I really don't feel like cooking. So we have made a change that Friday evenings are our takeout days. And having that plan really takes a lot of stress away. And a bonus house management tip is to involve your family. There is no rule written anywhere that we as moms have to do everything. Involve your spouse, involve your kids. In our house, my husband and I share responsibilities. For example, I cook all the food and he's the one who's doing all the dishes and unloading the dishwasher at the end of the day. So do whatever works for you, but you really do not have to do everything by yourself. Even though if you are like me, where you prefer to do some things because you do it better, like we said before, let some things go and let your family member help you out. I promise, even if it's not done perfectly or to your standards, you are still gonna be happier that it's done and that you do not have to put that on your plate. So that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are not yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe down below and I will see you next time.